All right, here we go with the next one. Real Escape Thailand. Process of purchasing a resale property. Now, this guy's is pretty serious. So grab a cup of joe, grab some water, and get ready. Here we go. Purchasing a property on a secondary market from a private seller can be summarized into six simple steps. Step one, agreement of terms and conditions. Ensuring all parties understand and agree the major terms and conditions of the transaction, such as the purchase price, that's number one, the reservation deposit value that will remove the property from the open market, okay? So that's like a deposit that's going to remove the property from the open market, allowing you to have that exclusivity as you, the buyer, and the seller negotiate your contract. The next bulletin point would be, will the buyer conduct a due diligence? So guys, conduct a due diligence. Now, if or will, you should. Next point, if so, will the reservation deposit be refundable? Remember that. So you got to put in the contract and ensure that you're secure by making sure that your deposit is refundable so you can conduct due diligence. Don't allow the buyer to be like, well, it's mine now. You have to make sure the contract is in your favor, all right? Subject to which terms and conditions, right? So it's fundable, but subject to what terms and conditions. All this has to be spelled out before you give anybody any money, all right? I don't care what anybody says. Or what is included in the purchase price? any furniture or fittings. So you have to be clear on that, right? What are you getting for what you're buying? Are you getting just a shell? Are you getting the furnishing? I mean, the bed, the cabinets, the, the appliances. Now, the next point is taxes and transfer fees. What is the buyer responsible for and what is the seller responsible for? What do we have to do? Who pays what taxes and fees? What will be the completion date for transfer of ownership. When are we going to finish this? When are we going to transfer? Okay. Now I'm going to go and dig into due diligence and taxes and transfer fee, but I'm going to keep moving down these steps at a later point. But first we're going to have to explore the due diligence. Remember I told you guys, this part is serious and it's going to be extensive. So grab your cup of coffee. We're in due diligence now, baby. It is common practice for property buyers to consult the professional expertise and services of local lawyers to conduct due diligence checks on the property's title and or the developer to ensure they have the legal right to sell. Yes, guys, someone might even try to sell you a bag batch of beans. You got to double check. Go get your lawyer no matter what. The real estate agent tells you that they have their own lawyers. Their lawyers are to cover their six. You have to hire your own local lawyer to cover your interests as the buyer, regardless if they say, well, our lawyers are there to help you too. They are, but you still need your own legal advice. And find a lawyer, not a friend, not somebody who knows somebody. Go to Google and type real estate attorney. All right, now let's move into the points of this. Typical legal services may include, so this is what you need from the lawyer, initial investigation of title to ensure there's no outstanding charges and encumberments. Make sure there's no liens on a property. Make sure that there's no mechanic liens. Make sure there's no bank notes. And an excessive of the price that you're buying. If he says, I'm going to sell it to you for $2 million buy. And then you're like, okay, but then they find a bank lien for 40 million baht. You're like, that's a problem. Preparation or review of a reservation agreement or sales and purchase contract. So they're going to review that sale agreement and that purchase contract. Have them review it. You read it, but you need a lawyer to also. Assistance for buyers in opening up a Thai bank account. Okay, get this assistance, guys. They can help with that. Advice and assistance in ensuring compliance with the Condominium Act. You know, condo fees and associations, if they're applicable to what you're buying, make sure you understand what's outlined in their 
terms and conditions of the property. So they might tell you, oh, man, you could Airbnb this bad boy. But looking at the Condominium Act, it doesn't allow short term rentals. So you're going to have to be riding dirty. Right. If you're going to still push for it. And this is a big point right here. Assist in obtaining the FET, Foreign Exchange Transaction Form, from the buyer's bank required at the land office to register the transfer of ownership. This is very important. It even goes to its own category, which we will explore after we list off these bullet points. And the next point is the lawyer services, right? They may include, and you want them to include this, calculation of the applicable taxes, duties, and transfer fees. The next point is representation at the land office for completion of title transfer. Have them come with you. Bring your lawyer. Next point, providing a power of attorney necessary for the transaction. It might smooth the processes. You, They might tell you, hey, come and do it. You'll be okay without them. But hey, man, this is all important to you. Now, let's go into the FET, Foreign Exchange Transaction Form, before we dive and finish off this due diligence services, okay? Obtaining, transferring funds into Thailand. And this is the F. ET part that we were just talking about. Okay. This is a part of the due diligence. The process of bringing money into Thailand is pretty simple. As long as you have the right documentation, you can easily transfer it without any problems. You need to provide proof of an inbound transfer of funds from the issuing bank, noting the specific purpose of the transfer. For example, property purchase, building name, unit number, and location. And you will receive a FET or TOR 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 3 form from a bank as a supporting document. The FET, Foreign Exchange Transfer Form, also known as the TT3, is the official form required to transfer over 20,000 US dollars into Thailand in any currency in order to purchase a property. So over 20 Gs over $20,000. We're looking for this. The property issuing of this, or excuse me, the proper issuing of this document is required in the future event of selling the property as it will facilitate you transferring the funds out of Thailand. So this document is important upon if you want to exit and sell, right? This is needed in the future. So even after you get it, guys, Keep that document, all right? Keep it on file, keep it in the cloud, keep a physical, keep it in a safe. For all other payment methods, you will be required to obtain a payment slip to be used as supporting documentation when you eventually transfer money back to your home country. So you need that, it's important. If over 20,000 USD into a developer's bank, they can get the TT3 form for you. If under 20,000 into the developer's banks. And then the developer will get a payment slip from the bank instead of a TT3 or FET form. If over 20,000 USD into your account in Thailand and then to the developer, you will need to get a TT3 from your bank. And for all of the methods of payment, you will be required to get the payment slip from the bank you use a supporting document instead of the FET or TT3 form. Okay, guys? So that's what we do to get that done. Let's go back to due diligence and continue out the rest. Due diligence. And we're still in a long process. And once we go back again, but due diligence, back at due diligence and services. Now, what are we searching for in due diligence? Is bankruptcy search on developer. We got an investigation of land zoning and building permit. We got an examination of the condominium jurisdiction person, company or individual owners. We got vetting of the rules of the condominium, right? Vetting of the condominium's account. Do they have money on reserves? So if you try to move into a condominium, and they got zero cash and reserves, but everybody's paying their condos fees, this can be an issue for you, All right? This might be a red flag. This might be a dead end at the deal. Like, now nah, I'm good. I don't want to put my money into this property because we don't have money left over for maintenance to continue to serve the common areas, 
All right, let's continue. Inquire as to the proposed future expenditure. So what's the budget going for? What are we going to be spending? What is our expenditure in the future in that condominium or any association of even homes and et cetera? Vetting of the insurance policy. Vetting of insurance policy. And site inspection where required. Yeah, man, get a property inspector. Find one. Don't just sort of like, oh, I looked at it. You're not a property inspector. You don't know anything about roofs, electrical, plumbing, and anything. So get yourself that independent property inspector. Review IEE and IEA filing processes and approval where applicable. Check construction and developer plans fit with EIA approval. And then the next point and last point, background check. If any outstanding legal proceedings or mortgages for the land, property, or actual developer, check to see if they don't got problems, if they ain't got the feds after them. Please note, buyers are not required to be in Thailand for the legal transfer of the property at completion. A power attorney will allow a lawyer or a representative to conduct on your behalf. Now, guys, we favor the lawyer over somebody you know, your girl, your side piece, your mistress or your sugar daddy, none of that. You know, get yourself a lawyer. Any funds used for purchasing a property can be sent your legal representative, sent to your legal representative, who will ensure all legal documents, FET, foreign exchange transaction form, invoices and receipts and payments are made to the seller and the title deeds and ownership documents are returned to you. A one-stop shop, right? So now we can go back, guys. This was all about a part about legal checks and due diligence, right? As you see, legal checks and due diligence. Let's go back. Now we're back at purchasing of resale property. Now we, before we even continue down the reservation agreement and the reservation deposit, we got to go to the taxes and transfer fees. Another whole empire. Right now, let me keep that separate because that's a little bit extensive. So let's go down to step two. We're going to go back and I'm going to do another video on taxes and transfer fees of resale property. Now, let's continue. Now, we're still here on process of purchasing your resale property. Step two, reservation agreement. This document outlines the general purchase terms, conditions and timeline associated with the pending purchase. So that's going to outline everything, the money you're giving, blah, blah, blah. Guys, don't give money before you give a reservation agreement going. Somebody's going to tell you, well, just give the money now. And then, you know, we're going to sign that later this week. No, 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 no. You got to have paper before they get any paper. All right. Because you have to have instructions about the paper that you're sending. If you don't have any agreement between you and the seller about what's going on, and I mean on paper legally, not, oh, I sent them a text message. We said this through email. Not good enough. Okay? Because even if you said something on email, you still don't have the in-depth context about that said property, who, what, when, why, where, and how of the money. Let's go to step three, reservation deposit. Hey, see, that's why step three is reservation deposit, not step two. It's step three. So a deposit of approximately five to ten percent of the purchase price varies from market to market. Will secure the property of interest, removing it from the open market. It is common practice for this deposit to be held either by a broker, lawyer, or seller. Let's continue. Step four, and guys get legal advice about all this step four sales and purchase agreement typically you will have 30 days to review the terms and conditions of the sale and purchase agreement which contractually outlines the conditions of the sale during this period buyers have the option to appoint an attorney in order to conduct the legal due diligence on the contract holding company and or land title deed hire the lawyer guys Step five, settlement and transfer. Parties to the transaction or their representatives, agent slash lawyer, will set a transfer date at the government land department. The buyer will prepare funds for the balance of the purchase minus deposit 
and the seller will present the original ownership document to facilitate the transfer. It is common for the buyer and seller or even both parties to obtain a representative through power of attorney to execute the transfer on their behalf. The mechanism of transfer at the land department, handover ownership and payment can either be through telegraphic transfer, typically to a legal representative account, at which point a cashier check will be drafted and presented by the buyer or their representative once the property has been officially transferred. All right. Step six, with the ownership now transferred, keys and ownership documents will be provided to the buyer. The new owner name and details will be registered with the PEA, the province electrical authority, electricity authority, and the building or project jurisdiction department, if applicable for the next billing cycle of CAM fees and electricity. CAM fees. What? CAM fees? What's that, guys? Maintenance fees. If you got a condo, you got those CAM fees. Not kill a camera on, but CAM fees. Maintenance fees. You're going to have to pay these, right? Maintenance fees common are maintenance or CAM fees. Do vary by property and development. The maintenance fees are typically paid monthly, but sometimes requested a year in advance. The maintenance fees covers general upkeep and repair of the shared or common areas such as swimming pools, gyms, reception, gardens, elevators, security staff, walkways, and other communal shared areas. It also cover bills for common areas and window cleaning fees. So it's important. These typically range from 40 to 70 baht per square meter. Okay, we have meters over here. And although, and although some can go higher for bigger projects with a wider and more luxurious selection of facilities and amenities or required upkeep, the maintenance fee typically does not cover cleaning or major repairs inside your actual property. In some cases, it does cover basic repairs, but you will need to check with the management company in the agreement. Guys, you got to double check that, okay? And there's another thing that I want to highlight. It's called sinking fund. So let's just highlight that, all right? The sinking fund, and this is specific to a thing in Thailand, all right? The sinking fund is a common fund paid by owners of all new condos or villa projects. And so new, new, new. It is a fund reserved for repairs, repainting, structural fixes, equipment replacement, and common areas and facilities. Normally, a sinking fund is calculated on the price per square meter multiplied by the living area of your own property. So 70, 50, whatever the price may be, bought times 35, 75 square meters of your property. And that's the total. It is paid once up front, although in rare cases, it will need to be replenished after a number of years upon agreement of all in the, in, uh, what is it, involved parties, developers and all owners. So you need to be mindful of that and look for it inside of your condominium acts. And this is a totally separate fee to the maintenance fee. It is only payable on new residential properties and is not required on any existing or completed projects. But of course, they said it may need to be replenished after a number of years. So it depends on where you're at. So just the jurisdiction department should be transparent in providing evidence of allocation of sinking funds and it is common for owners with voting rights in the project to collectively vote to determine where the funds should be spent. So keep that in mind, guys, okay? Let's go back, CAM fees. Let's go back to the process. So the process of purchasing a resale property has been completed. I will do another video about the taxes and transfer fees so I could explain that. Shout out to everybody. Remember, we are all we got. And I'll see you on the next one. This is the end of a process of purchasing a resale property, Real Escape Thailand. Thanks, guys.